Welcome to yet another episode of the Economic Times Cutting Chai Stories, a series of conversations with CXOs and business leaders over chai or coffee, if that's your preference, brought to you by ETH. The urgency and pressure on business leaders as they navigated successive waves of the COVID-19 pandemic was immense, to say the least. These business leaders had to dynamically monitor myriad ways to ensure that their respective companies stayed on course in the new normal. The incredible demands placed on them makes us often wonder how they had time for family, hobbies, or any downtime at a personal level. And let's not forget that they are mere mortals. This initiative by ET Edge is aimed at creating a deeper connection with them by getting a glimpse into their personal and professional journey thus far, finding out what makes them tick, understand their views on life and leadership, and also get a sense of what they do to unwind and recharge when they are not in business mode. It is said that one conversation can change the direction of life forever. It is also said that there is nothing better than a cup of tea to get you going. So grab your cup of tea and join me, Ivan Rodericks, for a very exciting cutting chai conversation. Today, it's my pleasure to host Prashant Joshi, Managing Director and Head of Consumer Banking Group at DBS Bank India. Prashant, welcome to the Economic Times Cutting Chai Stories. Many thanks, Ivan. Good to see you and uh, great to be on this forum. Good to have you on this forum. Uh, how are you doing today, uh, Prashant, on a, on a very rainy day? I'm good. It's a pity that I have to be in office while it is raining uh, so well. I mean, yes, yes. Mumbai in rains is not such a bad place, actually. Not at all. Not at all. Especially for those of us who've grown up here over the decades. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's kick off this conversation, uh, Prashant. I, I started off by talking and touching on COVID and we talked about the successive waves. It's been over two years now. Let's hope there is no third wave. Uh, yeah. Pre-COVID to, to now, you know, it, it has impacted you, me and the entire world in directly or indirectly. My question yeah. to you is, has your approach towards life, family and the community changed pre-COVID to COVID? And also, as a follow-up, has your leadership style changed in any way? Okay, interesting. This almost sounds like a AD and BC uh, uh, kind of comparison. <laughs> you know, because frankly, and I would agree with you that COVID has, uh, for a long time to come, we are going to talk, keep talking about you know before COVID and after COVID. I think it's it's clearly uh, made a huge huge difference to the way we uh, think about our own lives. I think the first thing uh, which is just and which which always new, uh, but I, I guess we never experienced it. Uh, and unfortunately, like most other people, uh, uh, you know, all of us have either seen someone suffer who is very close to us, or or uh, unfortunately even lost someone who is very close to us. Right. Right. And uh, this time around, um, no one has been an exception. Uh, so clearly, while the transience of life was always known, right? I think really one experienced it for the first time. Yes. That one is here today and not, not here tomorrow. Uh, so I think that clearly in, in terms of uh, uh, making a few decisions, uh, uh, just to give a simple example. So... Uh, you know, before COVID, I had not even listed down uh, all my investments properly in one place, uh, almost thinking that I am immortal. And if something were to happen, magically, my uh, wife and child will figure out what needs to be done. Right. right? But during right. those days, one, one, one realized that anything can happen at any point in time, which is why I said that the transients, uh, which we keep thinking and talking about, uh, actually it hit home. Uh, and uh, I actually pulled out a list and made a full list of my investments and uh, whatever else, right? Uh, yeah. Things to do if I'm not there. And and actually, I just I named that Excel just in case, mm. and 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 mailed it to my uh, family. It it was weird. I, two years back, I couldn't have thought 
uh, I was obviously not thinking about it. it. It's actually, it's actually with or without COVID, one should be doing this. Right? It's just a good practice to have. True. Right. Uh, but something as as simple as that. So clearly, I think that the fact that this is transient is is has hit home. Right. That life is indeed transient, and uh, so so that's that's one part. Uh, in in terms of leadership uh, as well, I I I, I think. Uh, one has become much more understanding. And uh, um, I think one of, I was always compassionate, you know, but much more understanding and accepting. Mm. Right. And, and earlier, I was a very hard driver, taskmaster. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have to get this done. And, and therefore, you know, there's nothing in our way uh, which can stop us. Right. I think some, some of that, uh, some of that has gone away. Okay. And okay. and it just became more humane, uh, uh, I think more compassionate than than what what I was before personally at least as a, a leader. Right. Uh, and and also I think I have started to listen to others more uh, post COVID. I don't know whether it's a COVID impact or what it is, you know. But uh, but but yeah. Uh, so clearly I said personally the the transience of it all has hit yes. home, and uh, I think professionally uh, I can I. Have, how should I, if I had to put it right, I think one has just become a little more compassionate, more understanding, uh, more, more listening. More, more empathetic, I think. More empathetic, yeah. that's the right way of putting it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. What a lovely note to start uh, this cutting chai conversation on. Yeah. Let me now try and take you down memory lane, Prashant, if you were to go back to the early years of your childhood, school, or later college. Um, yeah. Could you let us know about any positive influences or incidents that contributed towards shaping your foundation in those formative years? Yeah, I, I just I just like two specific instances, right? Which were which were uh, uh, which, which I still recollect. One, uh, most of us are influenced by our parents, and um, I, I was, I am, yet I'm even now influenced by my father a lot. And in, in, in my childhood, uh, there are two things which I still uh, uh, remember, you know, from him. One uh, is he would always say, if you want to go watch a movie, uh, I have no money for you. Right. But if you want to go buy a book uh, mm. to read, uh, come to me and uh, demand as much as you want. Right. So, uh, so I think clearly that, that value uh, got ingrained. Mm. that, uh, you know, that where do you need to spend and for what purpose do you need to spend? Right. Uh, so, and I'm a great fan of cinema and movies, by the way. Oh, uh, wow. but, <laughs> but, but, it is, but, but I think in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, that, that value of saying what is important to you sure. in, in life and where do you need to deploy your, I mean, to use a management jargon, where do you need to deploy your resources? I think that lesson was very, very, very clear. And uh, and 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 like like most of us, we we came from uh, not not great well-to-do families, but but good families. I mean, we I, 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 we had good childhoods and uh, you know uh, good education. Uh, but 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 clearly, I think he was a very he is even today is a very disciplined person, right? Be it health, be it uh, uh, the kind of activities that you do. So mm. I think clearly the discipline and, you know, uh, what you should be focused on, what are the right things to do that you should be focused on. These two values uh, uh, cl clearly have stayed with me. Right. And, uh, and, and therefore uh, in, in, in business also, right. It's about deploying resources for the right reasons. Yes. Uh, so that, so that, and discipline, right. These, these things are absolutely critical. Right. So these two have clearly stayed with me. But it's one very different, different incident uh, as well, and which, which is a, with a complete stranger. Uh, okay. And I actually, uh, I while I'm a banker now, I used in my college days, I used to be a radio jockey. Ah, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, at that time, there was no FM, so there was only nice uh, all India radio. You know where I used to go yeah. and uh, record these programs. Okay. And. Uh, uh, and, and I used to go record programs, you know, collect my check, which was a, a princely sum of 720 rupees, which in those days was a great uh, amount of money to have. 
Absolutely. And um, we used to, I used to do it. I mean, I, and I did it almost for three years. Mm -hmm. In one of the times, you know, uh, the, the lady direct station director, she just, uh, after, the, after the recording was over, she stopped me and said, I want to speak with you. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, tell me what it is. Uh, I thought she was going to say that it's over now. I think I've done it for three years. Good enough. You know, so no more. Mm. Uh, so she said, you know, I have found you uh, uh, as a very nice person, you know, twice, you know, we couldn't accommodate uh, you because some uh, other recording came up, but you were just being very nice. You never complained. You came back again and recorded. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to say thank you and that you are a good person. Wow. And I, I, I can't tell you, I had goose, goosebumps when she said that, you know, uh, because one of the things, while, while I said I inherited some values uh, and good values from my family, my father, right? One thing was very clear in the family that no one appreciated us on our face. Mm. Never. Yes. Even if you, even if you topped the school throughout, didn't matter. Right. Right. No one ever said you did a good job. Mm. Right. And this is almost first time someone said that to me, almost almost a complete stranger mm. and uh, it, it puffed my chest. Yes. Uh, that, that is something which I have carried even today. So, uh, uh, you know, because so today I, I, I say it more often uh, to, to the people, to the people who work with me. Right. I, 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 and if this incident hadn't happened, I, I don't think I would, I, I would be that kind of a person. Wow. Right. Yeah. So I think that these, these two things specifically have stayed with me. Thank you for sharing those examples because one was closer to home, in fact, literally at home, and, yeah. and the other is a complete stranger, more or less, like you said. And look at it, I mean, the impact it's, it's had on you. And I think sure. these are lifelong uh, impressions that are, that are there and have actually sure. determined the course of your journey, both personally and professionally. Wonderful. Yeah. So as a follow-up, let me ask you, and I think you touched upon uh, leadership, what values are most important to you, Prashant, as a leader? Yeah, I think it's oft, oft repeated, but particularly because I have been in financial services, uh, right, and are now close to 30 years. Yeah. Uh, to me, in, in leadership, like, like most other walks of life, uh, the most important thing is uh, integrity. Mm. And we keep saying that uh, all the time that... Uh, you know, deliver what you promise and don't promise what you can't deliver. Right. And, uh, and to me, uh, an integrity is not just about uh, malfeasance or any such thing, right? It's a simple thing, right? That if I told you, I will, I will call you in one hour's time. I need to call you back in one hour's time and say whatever uh, uh, it is. Right. Uh, so in simplest of things, to me, integrity is the most important thing for a, for a leader. Uh, but, but equally, uh, to me, leadership is not a privilege. I think it's a responsibility. Right. And understanding that is very important, uh, you know, because uh, it, it's a responsibility uh, to deliver many outcomes. Uh, and, and, and that is much more important than being treated as uh, an honor or a privilege. Right. So one is integrity as a value, understanding that leadership is a uh, responsibility. Right. And the third thing, uh, which, which again, maybe partly COVID, but even before that, I had this view that uh, if you, when I studied management, the, the, the overall view of leadership was of this macho, ma macho man, uh, and uh, almost like a Superman who will uh, charming, but still driving one hard mm. and, you know, getting that outcome uh, uh, in, in place almost larger than life. I think that has changed completely and rightly so. Uh, so, so as a leader, I'm very comfortable sharing my vulnerabilities with my people. Right. And, and I think uh, whether pre COVID or post COVID, I think that humane side of leadership is equally important. Right. So I think treating leadership as a responsibility, uh, integrity, as I said, is uh, non-compromisable. And then in some fashion, uh, uh, they said, being open to sharing one's vulnerabilities is, is a trait that I would love to see uh, across all leaders. It's fantastic. You passed out from I am Calcutta, if I'm not mistaken, in 1991. 93. 
ஒரு <laughs> would focus more on these aspects because as you grow as a leader i realize that it was not about your domain knowledge like you said you know that superman who's going and slaying everything it's yeah. not just about that it is the softer skills it's aspects of vulnerability that you're talking about i wish this is coming into the curriculum at least now you know because the world has changed I I completely I couldn't agree more with you. I'm sure education is who are listening and will listen to this uh, do take note of that because I think that's a big thing going forward. Yeah, okay. I agree. Okay, let me ask you a follow-up question and you touched upon leadership but there are a lot of young leaders who will watch this uh cutting chai conversation. So what advice would you give someone? You talked about integrity for someone going into a leadership position for the first time what would be your advice prashant i think i talked about responsibility as well right so yes. and and i i do this whenever i speak with people uh when i sit with leaders and chat with them i ask them what does leadership mean to them and uh, there are many answers which people uh, provide uh and responsibility is a very rare answer mm uh and i'm i'm not trying to be uh, when i say responsibility it is not about feeling that oh i own this set of people now and i'm i am kind of uh, uh you know taking care of their families that's a very um, that's an argument which i don't like actually yeah yeah it's a uh, but 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 i think just to feel responsible for the organization for the outcomes that we uh, uh, deliver uh, is 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 very important as a as a leader so that's 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 number one number two the realization that um, we can do only uh, uh, so much alone mm. and uh, uh, it's basically through collaboration that we need to deliver and i have always felt this in india given the fact that we are, we have always been competing all the time right, right. as you said you were the sp jain and i am we needed to compete with 30000 people to get into Absolutely. 300 seats Absolutely. so it's the focus has always been on individual brilliance individual contribution and so therefore this tendency of how can i get ahead in the queue Mm. and and that still doesn't go away yeah right so i think that so that dna of collaboration is not there with us right. uh, but the but the fact is that if we collaborate uh, outcomes will be far superior that realization also uh, uh, has to be there right so to me responsibility and the idea of uh, uh, collaboration is something which are which as leaders one has to have otherwise I, it's very difficult i think that's yeah. fantastic advice you know like you yeah. said you know the word if you just break up the the meaning of the word responsibility and collaboration itself if young leaders can 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 get their act together on these two, these two aspects i think they'll be fantastic leaders because collaboration is the name of the game today yeah absolutely may i ask you what is the most important risk you took along your personal or professional journey and and why did you take it and was it worth it okay on the on the professional uh, uh, journey actually I, i can say that um, about 6 uh, years back uh, you know i used to run a a large again consumer bank with a foreign bank and you know you know from there i i decided to move into an nbfc okay uh, put my own capital there uh joined that um, uh, nbfc and uh, it was literally doing it uh, bottoms up uh, right from building building business from the scratch and um, and and it it was it was clearly a risk uh, in 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 that sense you know because uh, um uh, and the job that i was doing i was successful at that and i was enjoying also what what i was doing uh but that there was always this uh, element of can i 
can i try entrepreneurship in some some fashion sure and i think i took that entrepreneurial plunge and uh, you know built that mbfc uh, 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 right 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 from the scratch uh, so yeah so when, when i went there i, I didn't know what, how how it will be right. uh, but touch wood i think thing things work out worked out reasonably uh, well okay and uh, and we took the company public did the ipo wow. uh, and 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 eventually said sold it to a strategic investor and and huge amount of learning over the four years things which i had never ever done before mm. uh, you know we we bought a few businesses uh, there as i said we did all the work pre work for the ipo of a, a firm we managed the listing uh, then investor uh, uh, relations uh, there were three technology platforms that we impl- implemented acquisition integration i think it's almost like you know compressed what people would do in 10 years within a four year time frame wow and and i think it's a huge learning uh, okay. absolutely uh, absolutely worth it from a professional perspective uh, uh to have to have done this uh, and then then in hindsight uh, now when i look back uh, while it it appeared risky at that point in time but then it didn't look like it was that much of a risk mm. wonderful wonderful fantastic i mean excellent excellent and thanks for sharing that with us uh may i ask you and not many people are willing to answer this but uh, i'm going to try and take a shot at it anyway by asking you this question prashant how much of a role has luck played a factor in your life or has it just been <laughs> about your qualifications your experience and your hard work i i think uh, the qualification and hard work helps sure but i i would be lying if i said that uh, you know luck did not play a part and people choose to put it in different fashions uh, yeah. i think there is one way of saying it is that i happened to be at the right place at the right time right and uh, and and i think that did happen uh, the fact that uh, i started my career in 1993 when india was liberalizing in 1991 mm uh right and all the liberalization has happened after that uh, so that that first of all that economic environment itself was enabling new things were happening all the time yes uh, the new the new india the telecom revolution came around uh, in the in the 90s right right uh, so clearly i think whether economic environment and infrastructure everything around it changed massively in india mm and in a way with the qualifications and the hard work that uh, i i did i think that that lifted all of us and i was no exception to that sure and um, i can't even talk about the period 2001 to 2008 it was magical Absolutely. everything everything that one touched turned into gold Absolutely. and mistakenly mistakenly i thought that it was me who was <laughs> who was the reason it it was not it was easy money uh, which central banks were pumping in it was the environment which was great you know which was which was uh, which was helping yeah uh, so i think in in all our successes and my success for sure uh, the fact that uh, the economic environment was so good in in some of those periods uh, clearly um, helped the, the path what india adopted after 91 clearly helped mm. so in a way I, i was i was lucky to be born and working in this uh, era yeah so can't can't under emphasize that it will it will be uh, yeah. dishonest to say that it was only qualifications and hard work right absolutely right. not my you know when you said that you, i am guilty of actually thinking that a lot of things that i did at that point in time was because of me and nobody else <laughs> would have been able to do it now with with experience and with this gray hair when i look back i know for sure that there were so many people who could have done much better than i did you know so yeah. that comes yeah, with with a little bit of wisdom and experience so yeah. i i get it i i get what you say yeah okay second last question in in this segment in your opinion how important is it for organizations to recognize the importance of the mental and physical well-being of employees and are organizations devoting enough time in your opinion and also are they de- devoting enough resources for the same yeah i think 
uh, and clearly post covid everyone has realized this even more than what it was before uh, that if employees are not in good mental space uh, and and physically if if you are if you are not in good shape if mentally you are not in good place uh, it it's going to affect uh, our work and the quality of work and uh, therefore eventually the outcomes mm. i think most organizations have realized it my fear is that as covid recedes mm. we will relapse into your early, our earlier uh, uh, era where if you worked late uh, it was the in thing to do mm. uh, and uh, uh, you know and and work life balance was almost kind of uh, made fun of mm. right uh, so i think organization most organizations in all fairness have the right intent Uh, D- dbs i clearly see that uh, very clearly all of us are committed to that as an organization across there are many initiatives that we are taking uh, to make in including the future of work we have you know where we have said permanently now you know two days in a week one can work from home nice uh, right? so that's only being one of the thing i don't think that that alone ensures physical and um, uh, mental well being there are many other initiatives Sure. but i think most organizations are uh, are going that path but as i said my only worry is that as covid recedes and we get back to more normalcy hopefully we don't go back right fingers crossed yep <laughs> i hope there's a mindset change there i i really hope yeah. uh, prashant final question in this segment for you uh, how do you unwind any interests hobbies or activities that you indulge in and and are there any items on your bucket list that are yet to be fulfilled wow uh no i think i have many interests actually okay uh, so i am a very avid uh, reader uh, particularly movie marathi goal. literature marathi literature i, I, I movie goer you yeah. are right but the two things which i really love doing one is i am also a marathoner uh, so wow i I I took up running pretty late but I I really enjoy it I find it almost meditative. Mm. Uh, and uh, so when I go on my long runs I really enjoy it and uh, for whatever I will never miss those whatever may happen so that really uh, helps me. And the second thing is uh, you know I love Hindustani classical music. Wow wonderful. Uh, I am also trained in Hindustani classical music in fact it's my regret uh, that when I talked about when i joining the nbfc for becoming an entrepreneur i actually had to leave uh, learning because i couldn't find time uh, but 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 i i love uh, hindustani classical music and there's very rarely a day where i wouldn't uh, listen to at least some of it okay uh, so that that clearly helps me and uh, I, and one thing which i still need to do i have promised myself that i will watch uh, all the grand slam uh, for four grand slam finals live in the stadium wow okay i i need to do even one okay so that clearly is something which is still pending but i i am i'm hoping to accomplish it sooner than later wonderful wonderful may your wish be fulfilled very very soon wonderful. thank you thank you ivan uh i'm i'm just having such a wonderful time i know we could go on uh but what i'd like to do is switch gears a little bit and move to another segment in this cutting chai conversation called the one word one line answer uh, so prashant mm-hmm. what i'm going to do is uh, ask you a set of questions where you need to answer in one word or one line okay if it's a line i'll specify uh, very simple okay. stuff the idea is to get to know you better beyond uh, you being the managing director and head of consumer banking group at dbs bank india so it's a fun round uh, are you ready for it Yeah, let's go. Okay, great. What's your favorite uh, meal or dish if you were to choose one? Parthai. Uh, what what Parthai, Thai cuisine. Ah, Parthai, yeah. Okay, great. All-time favorite ice cream flavor. Mango. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which business leader do you look up to or admire the most? Indra Nuri nice uh what was your favorite subject in school mathematics okay uh let me then ask you what was the mo- subject <laughs> you disliked the most in school chemistry really chemistry oh 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could you would say history or or civics or geography or something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you've answered, and you might say I want to choose both the options, but let me ask you: uh, kindly choose one, exercise yeah. or diet. Exercise. Okay. Work hard <laughs> or play hard. Work hard. <laughs> Nuclear family or joint family. Joint family. I live in one. Okay. Okay. Uh, Missile pow or pow bhaji? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> Missile pow. Missile pow. Yeah, yeah. Then let me ask you another one. Let's see if this is tougher. Sabudana, <laughs> sabudana vada, or yeah. alu cha vadiya. Alu cha vadiya. Alu cha. Any day. <laughs> okay. Uh, Painful truth or comforting lie? Painful truth. Three people who are closest to you, Prashant? My father, my son, okay. uh, and uh, my brother. Okay. Describe your journey thus far in three words. I think one word is enough for that, which is gratitude. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, let me ask you, if you were to be stuck in a room for 24 hours, whom would you choose to be stuck with? Ratan Tata, Amir Khan, Steffi Graf, or Mark Zuckerberg? Choose one. Steffi, I've been a big fan of hers. <laughs> the reason why. In fact, it was not, it's actually not in my options to ask you. But since you talked about Grand Slams, I replaced one with the other. Uh, and I said, let me put Steffi Graf there and see which one Prashant goes for. So that's nice. Yeah. Very clear choice. Yeah. Uh, kindly complete the sentence. I am most happy when dash, dash, dash. When I can sing a bandish flawlessly. Wonderful. Behind every great man, there is dash, dash, dash. A big force of luck. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're very, very humble, uh, Prashant. Uh, nobody can stop me from dash, dash, dash. Being myself. Wonderful. I think that we all can. This is the last question. I think that we all can. Listen to others more. You know, Prasant, uh, over the last 25, 30 minutes, uh, I, I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm lost for words, literally, but uh, what a wonderful cutting chai conversation uh, this was. You know, I'm reminded, having listened to you of this quote by Jack Welch, where he says, before you're a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, Success is all about growing others. And, and you are the epitome of this quote for me. There's another uh, quote that, that uh, I, I'm reminded of. I don't know who's said it, but you, it says that you learn more from failure than from success. Don't let it stop you because failure builds character. And through some of the things that you shared, you've gone through this journey. And... Uh, the, the final quote, again, based on, on your responses, was uh, this quote which says that success isn't just about what you accomplish in your life. It is about what you inspires, inspire others to do. And once again, uh, you know, you uh, epitome, uh, are an epitome of that, uh, Prashant. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was Prashant Joshi. Managing Director and Head of Consumer Banking Group at DBS Bank India. I had a wonderful time chatting with you and I'll repeat that again. We wish you, Prashant, your family and the DBS Bank India the very best going forward. Thank you, Ivan. You have been very generous. Thank you.